Okay, so I wanted to make this quick video because a whole bunch of people, including family and friends, have been asking me to see if which iMac model should I get. This is pretty much the max that you can get and this is the base that you can get. I've used both of them and here are my thoughts. In this video, we're gonna talk about what the differences are and if those differences make a difference. <laughs> we're gonna talk about if it's worth the extra 200 bucks you're gonna pay for this. And finally, which one should you get? Which one is worth it? Okay, 200 bucks. I mean, that's, that's pretty hefty, right? For 200 bucks, you can get pretty much 350 lemons. Yeah, I did the math. teeth are burning. Ugh. Like it got right up in my braces. Ah. Yeah, you can see some like blood on here. Oh no. Yeah, or you can pick up an AirPods Pro or you can get six of these AirTag loops. I don't know, like unless you had an AirTag, it wouldn't even make sense. Or even 64 bags of Oreo cookies. Ugh. That's, that's like a month supply. Hey, on a more serious note, what exactly are we getting here for 200 bucks? Firstly, you get more color options. Apparently Apple seems to think that yellow, orange, and purple are more premium colors because you can't get them on the base tier. The next difference is within the M1 chip, uh, both of them are gonna have the same amount of CPU cores. However, the base model has seven GPU cores versus the upgraded model has eight GPU cores. Another difference is you're gonna get two extra uh, USB-C ports on the upgraded model versus the base model. Now keep in mind, the two extra USB-C ports are not Thunderbolt ports. You still only get two Thunderbolt ports on both of these. Next up on your keyboard, you're gonna get a touch ID button here. Now that's gonna allow you to basically put your finger and log in or do Apple Pay or anything like that that requires a password. And last but not least, you get an ethernet port on the power adapter. Now, I'll be honest, I can't remember the last time I've used an ethernet port. So for me, this doesn't really make that big of a difference. Everything I'm doing, I'm doing over Wi-Fi, especially now with like Wi-Fi 6 and everything like that. It's, it's super fast, it's super reliable, as long as you have a good reliable connection. Now, if you were gaming or something like that, which I don't know if you wanna be doing on these iMacs, but if you were, I propose, um, then, then having that ethernet adapter is helpful. But we'll talk about that in a second as well. Here's the thing, what not a lot of people know is that you can still get the base model and get some of these upgrades without paying the full 200 bucks um, that you would have to pay for the upgraded model. Here's what I mean. The actual power brick with the ethernet port, there's an option for you to include the, power, the upgraded power brick for 30 bucks. Also, if you want Touch ID on your keyboard, you can also configure that for an extra $50, you can get Touch ID keyboard even with the base model. So it's not like you have to go with the upgraded model in order to get this. So all in all, if you wanted both the Ethernet adapter as well as the Touch ID keyboard, you're paying about 80 bucks. Yeah, 50, 60, 70, 80, 80 bucks. How am I an accountant? For a solid 80 bucks, you're getting both of those options. Now. That leaves us with a couple items that you don't get. Like you can't configure the base model to get the two extra USB-C ports. However, I would propose that it might be more beneficial to just buy an external, like a hub or an adapter, right? I have a couple good ones right now, hold on. This is the OWC Thunderbolt 4 port. This thing has been an absolute game changer. Highly recommend picking it up, especially if you have an M1 Mac or iPad or anything like that. So basically you can connect your computer to this and it'll give you three extra Thunderbolt 4 ports as well as a uh, USB-A port. You could go ahead, pick this up with your base iMac and you would have pretty much more ports on your base iMac than this. And this can be used with more computers. Let's say at the end, like you sell this iMac uh, or you wanna use a laptop or something like that. You can use this with many other devices. Whereas with this, you just get the two extra ports and it's only staying on this iMac. So let's say you didn't want the Touch ID on the keyboard. You didn't want the ethernet port. Then you could still save money by going with something like this. Which brings us to the very last two items which are non-negotiable. Everything else we could find a solution for um, which could be more beneficial or could be cheaper, but for these two items, it's non-negotiable. If you specifically want any of those three colors that are upgrades, then yeah, then you have no choice but to go for the upgraded model. So that one's semi non-negotiable, but the one non-negotiable item is the fact that there is seven cores of GPU on the base model versus eight cores of GPU on the upgraded model. So that's there. Let's talk about that. 
The thing is, I've never been one for, you know, running like Geekbench, Cinebench, Blender, and all those tests and stuff like that. And, and there are a lot of people that have already done that. A lot of them were pretty close to each other when it came to the base iMac and the upgraded iMac. Like I saw the Geekbench scores were very similar. Cinebench scores, the upgraded one was slightly better. But the only thing that I saw that showed a little bit of a difference was Blender. Now, to be honest, Stuff like that is only going to, you know, like come into play. Like if you're running like AAA level games and whatnot on your computer, which if you're getting like an iMac, I, I don't know if that's what you're gonna be doing. Like if you're running like League of Legends or, uh, you know, like Fortnite or something like that, you're gonna have no problems. Like you should be able to run that on, uh, you know, whether it's a base model or upgrade, like you're not gonna have issues. But if you're running like AAA titles, then yes, it could have slightly better, you know, frame rates on the upgraded one, but but even that, do you want a difference of like 25 frame rates to like 28 frame rates, like three extra, like it's, it doesn't make sense, right? At that point, you're just gonna get like a PC or like a computer or something like that. In my opinion, if you're playing serious games, this is not the computer for you. But if you're playing basic games, it doesn't matter whether you go with the base model or the upgraded model. When it comes to Final Cut Pro and other pro apps, to be quite honest, I have not personally noticed any much of a difference between the base model and the upgraded model. It, Pretty, they pretty much perform very similar to each other, which makes me think that the difference in that GPU core is insignificant. So here's what I propose. If you absolutely only have $200 extra to spend and you wanna spend that on your iMac, Honestly, you could even go with the base model and upgrade the RAM from 8 GB RAM to 16 GB RAM and that will take you even farther. But I digress. Everybody assigns value to different things in a different way. So, okay, let's conclude on this. Overall, is the upgraded model worth the extra $200? From a pure what you're getting value standpoint, I think, yeah, I think the 200 bucks are worth it if you need any of those extra items. Like if you need only one or two of those items, like if you only want the keyboard or if you only need the ethernet port, you don't need the extra ports at the back here. Let's say you already have a hub that you can use. And let's say you don't care about the extra minute GPU performance, then maybe the 200 bucks is not worth it for you. If you wanna save the money, if you wanna save the 200 bucks and you wanna get in at a lower cost, honestly, I would not feel bad at all with the base model unless your needs are a little more of a professional use case. But the vast majority of people, which is, I guess the next point is like, who should get which machine? I think the base model is plenty. Like with the M1 chip, it's so efficient, so good that you're not gonna need anything more. Now, if somebody needs more performance, if somebody's editing videos um, at a basic level and whatnot, then sure, they can go with the upgraded one, but also I would highly recommend you go for the 16 GB RAM option if you are editing video. 8 GB RAM is just not enough and you're gonna get frustrated. But that's about it for today. I hope I answered some of your questions and this was beneficial and helpful to you guys. If you like this video, then please go ahead and hit that like button. Please consider subscribing. I would love to have you guys on board as we explore more products and more cool stuff. And definitely appreciate your viewership. So please go ahead and smash the subscribe button if you like content around tech gadgets, filmmaking, and lifestyle. And on that note, I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, stay blessed, peace. This is really tough to eat. Oh. Oh. It's disgusting.